Lots of the conversations at Arapa are around, we would do this if we had more time. Or, oh, I, I didn't get around to it. Or, oh, I'd love to innovate, um, but I don't have time. And, um, and John and I were having a conversation just last week, I think, and, um, and I was ch sharing this challenge with John and around what we're trying to do with design exchange work in different ways. And I said, you know, people talk about timesheets a lot, you know, because we have to account for our time. And John said, well, well maybe it's not timesheets. Maybe it's time. And maybe it's how we manage that. So that's, that's where this talk came from. And um, we, we may go somewhere interactive with this, uh, or we may not. We'll just kind of see where, where the talk goes and, um, and where, the, where the people are at. Um, but John, I just wanted to ask you a few questions first, by way of introduction. Now, you've had a very varied career. True. And you're, um, can you tell us what you're, what you're doing now, and tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today? Um, that's a very big question. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> So I guess what I'm doing now is I, I am focusing on how to help people to become more, more effective, more personally more productive, and through the focusing on time, attention, and energy. And my particular interest is around attention, and, but time is the, other, is the other big one. So how did I get to this? I've done a, quite a lot of things in my life. I've, this is the ninth country I've lived and worked in. I've worked in the corporate sector, I suppose, for quite a lot of, a lot of my life. Um, also worked in the oil industry in South America, for example. And the, about 15 years ago, I became really interested in our education systems. And I became interested in why are our education systems not working as well as they seem to do in the past? And what is it that's causing uh, the the change. And that led into a great deal of investigation into the brain, how the brain works, how the brain grows, what the effects education has had on the brain. And it may or may not surprise you, but the education system that we've all been through has shaped our brains in a way that's not that helpful for an uncertain future. So a lot of my work is around, well, how do you, how do you get the brain back into balance, so to speak? so that we are well prepared for an uncertain future. And so a focus on time, attention, and energy at its heart is about reorganizing how we engage with the world so that we are healthier, happier, and more productive in the work, in the work that we do. So the, the rise of kind of technology and the speed at which we are working these days, and the sheer amount of information that we're generating um, has obviously kind of rapidly increased um, in very recent years. I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, but I, I can remember pre-internet, pre-email. Um, and even when I came to Arab um, and started work as an engineer, it was you printed three copies of a report and you sent them to the client. And they went out on Friday afternoon and, and that was that. There was no staying until eight because the post would be finished by then and then. That would be that. Um, the, the speed at which we're working now is rapidly accelerating. Um, how, do we, how do we keep up with that? In fact, really, that's where tension comes in. Simply because the way we've all been brought up, developed, and become accustomed, we, we pay attention to a lot of things that, that don't matter to us. And particularly, we will pay attention to things like somebody does something and we will, we will judge them. So we, we are using our attention to judge somebody. Or a situation occurs and we use our attention to blame somebody. Or somebody comes up with an idea and we use our attention to make assumptions about that idea. So one of the key ways to, to handle all this complexity is to stop all of this complexity causing us to pay attention to things that we need not pay attention to. 
and then shifting our attention to the things that, that really matter to us. And once we're really clear about where we should be paying our attention, that releases energy. And that energy allows us to, to put in the, the right amount of time to, to get things done so that we can, in fact, then get into a virtuous circle, paying attention to what matters, getting the energy, using the time, being able to pay attention on what matters. All of that sounds quite mindful to me. It sounds like almost a meditative approach to work. Mm. I've, just, I've just been on a long service leave for two months and I went to Bali and did yoga every day. Um, and it was wonderful. And I convinced myself that when I came back to Arab, I was going to be a new person and you know, I was going to sit there in this kind of zen-like cross-legged state. Um, but unfortunately, and, and as we were talking before, um, my inbox is, is an absolute, I mean, it's a car, I think to call it a car crash is probably generous. I think there were 900 and something unread emails in, in my inbox. Um, how, how do we practically direct our attention and our energy um, when we have constant distractions? I mean, even if I close my email and um, then my phone is ringing or um, people stop, stop by, and, and that's, I mean, that's natural, isn't it? We interact with one another. How do we focus? Mm. And in a sense, that's, a, that's core of what we can work through now. So what I've put on, um, just a couple of slides together, but one of the slides is a, is a road map about starting from this sense of, yeah, there's, there's too much to do, too many claims on our time. My inbox has got hundreds and hundreds of emails in, in it. Taking that as a starting point and then working our way through how to manage all of that, make sense of it, and end up with a sense of control, a sense of control over what we're doing, and with that control comes comes the regaining of time. Great. Well, let's let's dive dive in, shall we? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, the core of personal productivity is time, attention, and um, energy. And today we're going to focus really on, on the time aspect of this. And typically, if you're going to, to start, you start either on time or attention. And you start on time if you just feel things are out of control. Start on time. If you feel that you're not clear where you're going, then start on attention. But you can start on either of those. You can also start on energy. If you're completely exhausted, take a holiday. But typically, you start with time or attention. So if you want to manage time, if you think about um, the elements of it, then there are, there are inputs. And inputs come from all sorts of places. Obviously got emails that bring stuff into us. We have uh, action plans, we have projects that we're working on, and they will bring inputs to us. We have meetings that we need to attend, so those are inputs to us. We'll have scraps of paper with things that we should do on that are inputs to us. We'll be taking a shower in the morning and something pops into our head and that's an input. So a, and, we, and typically those we'll try and remember as inputs. So a whole range of different inputs. And then there are outcomes that we want to, want to be able to achieve, that we need to achieve for the work that we do and, and that we want to achieve because of personal satisfaction or professional satisfaction. And then out of these are the actions that we would need to take to be able to achieve those outcomes. So a bunch of inputs, some outcomes that are desirable for us to achieve, and then the actions that we would need to take to, to do that. So that's the, those are the three elements that really we want to look at. So if I may, sometimes I come to work with quite a clear picture of what I want to do for the day. Um, which would be an outcome that I'm desiring. Um, but when I, by the time I've finished reading my email, um, I, I quickly lose a sense of what it is that I'm trying to do. So do they go input, input, outcome and action, or, or do, does that order kind of change? Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, let's, um, in a sense, let's move down Let's move down the roadmap. So there are nine steps here. And the first one 
is really consolidate, consolidate your work. So all these inputs that you've got, all the actions that you need to take, really need to be in a single place. And very often they're not. So often we will use our inbox for email as a storage place for emails. And then we'll have a calendar which has the meetings that we go to. And then we might have a to-do to -do list either on paper or somewhere else or electronically. So the key is to get all of these into one place. And because calendars are so pervasive these days and we take a meeting in a calendar as being something that we really have to do and people can put meetings into our calendars, we can put meetings into other people's calendars, then the calendar really is, is, is currently the heart of what we do. So we look at a calendar and we say, yeah, I've got these things to do. So what we need to do is to bring everything else in line with that calendar. And things like Outlook, things like Notes, things like Gmail, allow us to do that really quite effectively. So within Outlook, in a calendar view, we can we can look at tasks by day so that we can have a view that says for each day, here are my meetings and below that, here are the tasks that I've got for this day. So we can begin to show in the same format the meetings I've got and the tasks that I've got to do. So the question then is how do we create tasks? Two main ways. One is we simply create a task and we add some detail to that task. It goes into our task list. If you've got um, an iPhone or a smartphone, particularly on an iPhone, there's, there's a reminder list. So you can put it into a reminder and you can sync that with tasks. So even when you're out of the office, you can add a task. So not quite in the shower, but when you get out of the shower, if you remember something, you can put it as a reminder and then that will sync in. And once you've created a task, then you need to set a start date for it and a due date for it. And quite often we, we work on due dates and therefore we don't get round to something until it, we're quite close to the due date. Whereas if we organise by start date and we set a start date that says, okay, the due date's two weeks after the start date, we really need to get the work done. This is when we need to start this task. It's not the last moment when we need to get this, this task done. Many of the inputs we get are emails. And again, one of the facilities Outlook Notes, Gmail allow us to do is to drag an email out of our inbox and into a task. In fact, if you just drag it from inbox into task, the email then becomes the body of a task. The email that's in the inbox, you can then file or delete and you've taken something out of your inbox. But the, the task is there with the email in. And as it's a task, you can set a start date and you can set a, a due date. So anything that comes into the inbox, we can turn into a task and remove. Anything that we think of as we're out, we can turn into a reminder, which becomes a task. And as we are working through the day, as things come in, as we attend meetings and we have action points to do, we can turn these into tasks as well. And in every case, those, those can show up in a, in a daily look. So we see the meetings we have to do and the tasks we have to do. And having just had to reboot my laptop, I will now get at my Outlook and show you what mine looks like. And you will talk amongst yourselves. Well. I just wanted to ask the room, how many people are already using some sort of a process where they drag emails to tasks? So three people around that, 40. Four. Great. Um, and who's using another method to kind of organise tasks and emails? Yeah. What, are, what systems can we be using? Sticky notes. Sticky notes? Like, uh, Excel. Excel. Yeah. Trello. Trello. Uh, two, two on Trello. Yeah. 
I'm glad that my inbox is not going up on the screen. John's going to show us his Zen inbox, no doubt. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just thinking about how long it actually take me to take those 900 emails and turn them into tasks. And when I do them, if I did, are there any other questions that people would want to ask at this stage about time management? No. So, no matter how nice. My wife looks on the screen. How do I get this screen onto that thing as I? <laughs> Somebody must know. He's a man who knows. Um, so another question to the group. Who, okay. who here has Perfect. got more than 500 oh, yeah. unread emails in their inbox right now? Oh, we're not the only one. Who's got more than 200 on A hundred? Fifty? Ten? Who's got more than ten on red emails right now? Okay. And who, um, who checks their emails in a very kind of organised and disciplined way, i.e. once, twice or three times a day? One person. Good on you, Phil. Yeah, it's interesting. So we've got we've got your Zen inbox on the screen. Well, this yeah. So this is my calendar view. So all the meetings and things I've got during the week, and then on the bottom here the the, the tasks on a daily basis, and obviously the ones I've completed are are, are crossed off. And on the right hand side, I've got tasks which are just there, which are no date. So not yet sure what to decide with them. And then ones which are for today, ones which are for tomorrow, and then um, the following week. And so as I go through the day, I see what tasks I've got to do. But I can, I can see everything. And once I've, I've got something as a task, I don't need to think about it again until it comes up, until its start date comes up, and then I can do something with it. So let me show you my inbox, because it, it's um, John's so impressed by it. So that's currently my inbox, and those are two things which, are, which I'm going to do today. So they're, they're, they're still um, sitting there and came in just before I came out. So that's so a couple of times a week you really want to get the, the inbox down to zero, and then you've got you have control. <laughs> Can I just say that I'm talking to an extremely busy man here. I like. I know it's hard to believe, but John is an incredibly busy man that um, has a very successful and rapidly growing business. So, yeah, it's pretty extraordinary. Thanks for that. <laughs> so the first step then is consolidate, consolidate your work. Get everything into, the, into one place so you can see um, what, what you need to do. And the next step is what I've already intimated to, is that once you've got everything, then, then schedule it forward. So you've got all of these tasks. You can't do them all today. So schedule them to when you can do them or you do need to do them sometime in the future. So, and schedule by start date. So start date and finish date. But display them by start date so that you know when you want to, want to do it. And so this takes perhaps a little time, perhaps half an hour per week in terms of you, everything's coming in and just sort of planning it forward. And then on a day-by-day on a day basis as new things come in, it can just take a few, few more minutes to, to, to plan it forward, to move things um, into the right time for you to get back to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know if you're about to cover this, but in terms of planning a day, is there an easy way to um, interface between tasks and your calendar? So you've got a task scheduled for today, and you've got an hour free later that afternoon, and you go put this task in there as an hour. Absolutely, you can. 
sorry, we'll, we'll hand the mic around in the future for questions. Oh, sorry. Um, but just to summarise the question is, is when you're planning your day, is there a way of integrating tasks with calendar? Is that the question, yeah? Yeah, there is. You can just drag a, a task into the calendar and then you can put the, the time on it so that it's, it's when you want it. And that's a, a good thing to do when there's something that you definitely need to get done. If it's in the same priority in your mind as a meeting, then the chances are you're, you're more likely to do it than, than if not. So the third step then is to, f is to focus your day. So you've got all of these tasks, they're, they're scheduled by day. So you want to look at what you need to do today and determine which are the most important, which are the most urgent, and, and you can, in the tasks by day, you can move them up and down. So you can put the most important ones at the top, less important ones below that. And you need to be realistic and flexible, uh, but work out, well, what is it that I can do today? What is it that I need to do today? And typically, People talk about three things. So there are three things that I've really got to get done today, and those would be the top three things in your in your daily um, task list. Great. Yeah. So, so the next is about reducing the noise. So there are lots of things that come into us that we really don't need to pay much, if any, attention to. And we really want to find a way to get rid of those as quickly and as easily as possible. And these can be emails that are simply for information. And as we'll see in a moment, one of the key ways to handle emails is to be able to, to if you want to store them, to store them really very efficiently. And the most efficient way to store is to have a single inbox, a single box next to your inbox for storage. Now, I'm guessing that many of you here, below your inbox, you'll have a whole bunch of things where you file emails. Would that be correct? And if you think of the time it takes you, this email is not of real importance to me, but I feel I should keep it, to then find the right box to put it into and then put it into that box is, is quite simply wasted, wasted time. So what we want to do is to make that process really, really efficient. If you still can't just delete it, then you want to make that transfer into storage very quick. Because if you've got several hundred emails a day and you're storing you know, 100 and 150 that, that really aren't that important to you, then there's time there. So what we want to do is to to handle that time. So that's on an email side. There's other noise that comes in, in that people coming and putting demands on your time because actually they've left things until the last minute. So they really need stuff now when if they'd been better planned, they could have given you a week's notice for it. So reducing that noise is, in a sense, it's, it's about protecting your personal space getting people to realize that actually you're very happy to do the work that they need from you, but you do need it so that you can put it into, into a schedule so that it will get done at the quality and time that, that, that they need. So we want to reduce extraneous noise, things we shouldn't be paying attention to, and people trying to put imposts on our time which are not, are not reasonable. So any questions? Thanks, John. Um, just a question. Do you have any particular strategies on how you stop people from imposting on your time politely so that you get an effective outcome? If you're able to, to have a conversation with them and explain what it is that you're, you're trying to do and that things that come in in time will get your full time and attention and things that come in at the last minute will, will be treated like a last minute item. And it may take several conversations for that to, to take place. And it's a cultural thing. 
but gradually the culture will change. You become known as the person who delivers on time when the stuff comes in on time, and you'll get stuff on time, definitely. Okay. So keep it simple. Again, I've intimated to this. In your inbox, you really, you really only need inbox and storage. And into that storage goes all the emails that you want to keep. Now, at first you think, well, where will I, how will I find the emails that I need? And there are two things. One is Outlook, Notes, Gmail, have very good and sophisticated search capacities. So if you need to find an email again, you can search for it. And one thing you may not realize is that if you open an email, you can actually go into the subject line and change it. So if it's an email which is, has it, you know, particu some peculiarities to it and be difficult to find again, you can actually just give it a title in the subject line, which would make it easy to find. So you can put everything into a single storage and you can very quickly find it again. So keep it, keep it simple, and particularly around email, try and get it down to, to one. Now, most people can't get it down to one in the first instance, uh, but get it down to 10, and then you realize, yeah, actually I can get it down to less than that. And gradually you'll get it down to, to one, because it, it is just time. When we've got multiple things, we have to make decisions, we have to do a lot of stuff. Whereas if you've just got one, it's, we do the same process every time, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. And again, intimated process to empty. So you really want every few times a week to process your, your inbox down to empty. And again, if you can, if you can drag emails in, into tasks and then delete or store the email, there's no reason why you, can't, why you can't do this. And it's just a question of every now and then when it's, you know, you've got 10, 10 or 15 things there, not 900. Um, um, just go through, sort them out, so that by the end of the, the, end of the day, say so end of a Friday, your, your inbox is clean. And then you've got a sense of control, that you know where everything is, all your tasks are in your task list, they're all assigned to, to days or weeks, or some indeterminate time in the future, and you're less stressed, let me put it that way. There's no doubt about it. There's a, a great sense of control and a great sense of lack of control when you've got an inbox which is out of control. So I'd like, just like to ask a question at this stage. I often find it quite overwhelming going through emails because if I read 100 or 200 emails, um, there is so much information. Um, and and my, I'm aware that my attention kind of goes all over the place. If I'm only trying to focus on three goals a day, do you have any tips for how we, we maintain our focus on our goals while processing enormous amounts of information? In fact, we're, we're sort of trespassing on the attention side of personal productivity here, in that if we do the necessary work up front around where we should be paying our attention so that we've got real clarity over what are the goals we want to achieve and the actions necessary to achieve those goals and we you know, have them in front of us on a daily basis, then that helps a lot. Because paradoxically, some of the things which are most important to us are long term. And because they're long term, they take a small amount of effort on a regular basis, and because they take a small amount of effort on a regular basis, they get pushed off. So paradoxically, the most important things are often the things we pay least attention and put least time to. So if we're really, really clear about what it is that's important, that's, we've got that in front of us, and we properly schedule what we need to do, then we can stay focused on the things that matter, matter to us. Any other questions?
In fact, that's a segue into this next step here, which is to identify, we've got all of these tasks, we've got all these inputs, we've consolidated them into tasks, we're planning, we really have to be, to be clear where we add real value, and we really want to focus our time into the areas where we add real value. So we may not be able to do all the things that come our way, so let's focus on the things where we, where we add, add value. So a clear step here is to clarify the outcomes that you can produce that are the most valuable in terms of, of your contribution to the success of the organisation. So identify your value. Make sense? So eighth step is, is you need to make time to plan. And planning is simply a, a process that we need to have to be able to take our inputs, turn them into tasks, determine which tasks are the ones that are most valuable for us to do, and then to schedule those tasks over time. So again, half an hour a week of planning is probably sufficient to do this, but, um, but it needs to be on a regular basis. So you don't get overwhelmed by tasks that you've scheduled out in the future suddenly coming in a, in a wave towards you. You do need to stop on a weekly basis probably and think, okay, these things are coming up one week, two weeks, three weeks out. Is that still the right place for them to be? Should I push some out? Should I bring some a little forward? Where's the greatest value I can, I can bring? That balances the time that I've got to be able to deliver the outcomes that I want to, I want to do. And then the last one is to, is to it really is to protect uh, the work that you do and fight for the importance of what you do. And this comes back to the question about how do you, how do you prevent imposts of other people on your time? And when you are really clear about what you're trying to achieve, you're really clear about the value that you bring, and you're really clear around the time you've got available to achieve that, then it makes it much easier to be able to stand up to somebody and say, I cannot do this. Or if I do this, I need to, to stop doing something else. So we need to fight for the outcomes that we want, the value that we bring, and the time that we have, so that we don't overwork, so that we do have a, have a balance in our life, and we get as much that we can get done, given our capabilities and the, and the constraints under which, we, under which we operate. It's quite a remarkable framework. I mean, I've, I've read a couple of books, believe it or not, on time management and getting things done. And um, what I really like about this framework is that it seems to take into account more than just how do I physically get through the amount of information that I have to do. Talking about kind of our own value and how we can best um, add value to the organisation and the organisation's goals, um, or our, our personal goals if we're working for our own our own businesses. Um, and then about that, that bit at the end about protecting what's important and kind of recognising our own value. Um, thank you very much. That's really, really wonderful. So I suppose I um, the question now is, is what happens next? Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> and before I leave this, can I just... So this is a framework developed by um, Dermot Crowley in a book called Smart Work, which came out very recently. And um, if you want to pursue this further, definitely worth getting that, that book, as he gives very detailed instructions really around how to use Outlook notes and so on to be able to, to handle all of these different uh, elements of becoming more, more productive. So in terms of... Um, of moving forward from here, I think the suggestion we, we had was that whether people would like to say, yes, I want to do this and um, sign up or commit in some way to doing it, 
and then perhaps in a week's time we have, a, we have a, an opportunity to sit round again, see how people are going and perhaps some, some coaching or some advice around, around how to take it to the next, next stage. Yeah? Anyone, who, who's up for just like a rough kind of, yeah, I'll give it a go for next week or two. Yeah, okay, great. So um, if you'd like to reply to the email address that the invite was sent from, um, which was either my email or Mel Design Exchange, um, and then we'll, we'll send out a note. Um, but I think we were talking about maybe a, a two-week target to in my case, I've got to read all those emails. Even if I only read them, that's, that's got to be my target for the next two weeks. And then um, and maybe we'll do a check-in before then. But we, we just need to work out some of the details. I just wonder if there are any questions. Yeah. Um, the storage uh, below your inbox, you've got the storage. When you clean that out, what do you end up with 10,000 emails? No. Just, just um, repeat, repeat the question. Mm, so, yeah. do you clean out the storage in, um, folder in your inbox? It's got an automatic archive on it, so six or twelve months worth of stuff just gets archived right. on a regular basis. Okay, but we're, we're, I mean, if I'm working on a project, I've got to store emails. Yeah. So, um, cheap or whatever, but it's fine doing that. So you just go at the end of the week, you just go through through that storage and, uh, and toss it all in the people. No, in your case, you might you might have more than one. You might have project one, project two, project three, right. and then just put all the emails related to that right. straight in that. Yeah, yeah. The, the ideal is to only have one, but practicalities may mean you have you have more than one. Yeah, because I use favourites, so I just put the ones that I'm using regularly, just toss the emails straight. Mm. Do you, do you want to answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me respond to this question. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, Dermot um, it tells a story of, um, of a very high-powered Sydney CEO. And Dermot went in to see him. And the CEO had 5,000 emails in his inbox. And so he said to Dermot, OK, what's the quickest way for me to reduce my inbox? So rather flippantly, Dermot said, Control A, delete. <laughs> And before he could say, but of course that's just a joke, the CEO had done control A, delete. <laughs> and Dermot was in a sudden panic, so do control Z to get him all back again. And the CEO said, no, I'm the most powerful person in the company. <laughs> <laughs> if people want me to respond to an email, they'll send me another email. So, <laughs> so that's one way to, to get through the backlog. And as you rightly say, if you haven't read it by now, and it's been in the thing for a couple of months, then the chances are it's not that relevant to you. So it was, what was it done? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't delete your working hour after they're done. You're going to do that. Oh, I did that. <laughs> I read that one. It's all right, I'll give you another two hundred million lines instead. Very interesting point. Um, my wife works for another company who um, is. is uh, sorry, her boss has hundreds of emails. And the way that she filters, he filters the emails is it's sent to him, he'll read them. If it's a CC, he just doesn't read them. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting to that approach that sometimes if you're CC, you're expected to have read it and understood it. Whereas if you're reading it to, then it's obviously something directly to you. I'm wondering whether that's something that you've come across or you have a thoughts on that. There are certainly people who, who take that strategy. If it's to them, they read it, and if it's CC'd, they don't. Um, but it does come down to context. Yeah. As you say, sometimes, if you're not the CEO, they're not always to you, but you do need to know what the CEO has been, been receiving, so. Just to add that, um, I was taught to, uh, I just play uh, a rule that any CC goes to a different folder. So I may look at that folder at the end of the day, but it's not cooking up my email with all the two emails. Uh, 
Yeah. And what I do for things that, that, that I'd like to read, but I'm not going to do, is I drag them into, into OneNote. And so you, you have the email in OneNote. So I've just got a whole bunch of things sitting there, which I can easily see and read as necessary and then, and then delete. So rather than making them tasks, just put them into a separate folder, but outside of, um, outside of Outlook. Any more questions? Well, it just leaves me to say thank you ever so much for coming in and presenting this framework to us. Um, it's, um, as people know, we're exploring different ways of working and whether we can improve what we do as a company through this working prototype. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when we follow your framework. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.